Good morning, everyone. My name is Susie Murray, and I will be acting as the zoning administrator today. Before we kick off this meeting, though, I'd like to announce that we are offering um, Spanish translation. We have a translator, Charles, on that will assist um, our admin staff in explaining how to connect. So Lonnie, I'm gonna hand it over to you and Charles for a moment. Hi there, um, my name is Lonnie and I'm the recording secretary for this meeting. Um, I just wanted to give um, all the panelists and our audience some instruction. Um, uh, so um, I'd like to ask the interpreter currently on the Spanish channel to commence the translation of the meeting. Um, but before he does that, um, to join the Spanish channel, you want to select the interpretation icon on your Zoom toolbar. Um, also, um, for our English speakers, you want to select that globe as well um, and select English. Um, for those joining the Spanish channel, we recommend that you shut off the main audio so you can clearly hear the Spanish translation. Um, it gives time for the interpreter to translate. Um, if you have any questions, please raise your hand by selecting the raise hand icon, and I can guide you through it if you are having issues. Lonnie, will Charles be repeating that information in Spanish? Yes, he will. Um, so for all of our English speakers, um, I just wanna make sure again, please select the interpretation, uh, which is the globe icon and then select English as the language. All righty, um, Charles. I'm going to hand it over to you for translation. Okay, Susie. Uh, okay, uh, Zoning Administrator Murray. Um, I think we are good to get started. And I answer to Susie as well, Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm also going to say that um, it looks like we're missing the G on the Zoning Administrator in my title bar. I'm not too worried about it, but I thought I might point it out while I'm while I'm talking. So. Good morning again, everybody. I think we've got our, our translating uh, process up and running. So with that, I'd like to, it's 10, well, it's 1035, and I'd like to call the meeting of the zoning administrator to order. <clears throat> I think there's a, a little blurb that I'm supposed to read, Lonnie. Do you have that that you could put up on the screen? Uh, 
Uh, I do not have mm -hmm. it right in front of me. It's going to yeah. take me a minute. That's okay. I'm going to try and ad lib here. So we, um, we ask that everybody remain polite and courteous. And if um, things, if somebody gets rude to applicant, to speaker, to staff, um, they will be muted. So we just like to keep everything polite here. So pursuant, I'm gonna kick it off with reading the top of our, our agenda pursuant to government code section 54953E and the recommendation of the health officer of Sonoma County. <clears throat> Uh, the zoning administrator meeting will be held via Zoom, a Zoom webinar. Members of the public can participate virtually at www.zoom.us slash join or by dialing toll free 877-853-5200. The meeting ID, I have to hunt down here. The meeting ID is 823-7945-4104. So, um, Uh, public accessing the meeting through Zoom can provide comments during the public meet comment period. Additional information related to the meeting participation is available at www.srcity.org slash zoning admin. The meeting will also be live streamed at https semicolon, I'm sorry, colon, semi, let me start over, https, colon, backslash, backslash, www.youtube.com slash city of Santa Rosa. And it works if you just Google YouTube. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to item two on the agenda, public comment. Uh, this is a time when any person may address matters not listed on the agenda, but which are within the subject matter of this jurisdiction of the zoning administrator. The, pu the public may comment on agenda items. When the item is called, each speaker will be allowed three minutes to speak. And so with that, I'm going to ask if you have any comments that are not um, regarding items listed on the agenda, please raise your hand. Lonnie, do we have any hands raised? Zoning Administrator Murray, I do not see any hands raised at this time. Okay, great, thank you very much. So moving on to item three on the agenda, zoning administrator business met the statement of purpose. The zoning administrator is appointed by the planning and economic development director and has the responsibility and authority to conduct public hearings and public meetings and to take action on applications for minor discretionary projects. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the applicable review authority, be it design review board, cultural heritage board, planning commission, or city council as applicable to the decision. All actions taken today may be appealed. If you are interested in submitting an appeal application, please contact the project planner or anyone in the planning division. Appeal applications and associated fees must be received by close of business on October 31st. Halloween is not a recognized holiday and I will say costumes are optional. So moving on to uh, item 3.2, zoning administ administrator reports. I have none. Item four, consent items. We also I don't believe we have any consent items either. And as far as scheduled items, 
bear with me. Item 5.1 is a public hearing for Elroy's Express Max Incorporated food truck. It's exempt from CEQA. This is a minor conditional use permit and it's for the property located at 505 Santa Rosa Avenue, file number CUP 22-027. Project planner is Mike Wixon. Mike, if you could give us a presentation. Yeah, thank you, Susie. Uh, my name is Mike Wixon, project planner for this particular item on the agenda. And I'm going to share my screen here as I make the presentation. And are you able to see that on your end? No, not yet. Okay. I think we can have somebody else control the slideshow if you'd like. How's that? Nope. I have it ready. I can share for him now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Apologies. Let me interject really quick before we uh, move to item 5.1. Um, Zoning Administrator Murray, can you please make an announcement about the items that are getting continued? Oh, sure. I was going to do it as I went through the agenda, but I think it makes a lot more sense. Thank you to do it now. And I'll reiterate it as we make our way through. So we do have several items that will be continued for a variety of reasons. Um, item 5.2 is for Pura Vida Recovery Services located at 5761 Mountain Hawk, Suite 101. We have received a request for public hearing and this item will, it will be continued to November 3rd, 2022. And, um, today. excuse me, oops, at 2022. Okay, hold on, there's more. Item 5.7, <clears throat> which is an AT&T telecommunications fills, uh, uh, facility modification, also exempt from CEQA, a minor design review permit at 1700 Hohen Avenue. Um, we have re re received a public hearing request. There's also going to be a change of address on that. So we will definitely be re noticing that when we know what date the item is being continued to. Item 5.8 is also being continued to a date uncertain. This is for a, a public meeting for uh, the Neely addition and window replacements, which is another exempt project. The landmark alteration at 641 Oak Street, and it will be re-noticed when we move forward with the project. I will reiterate that as we go through the agenda. So if anybody signs on late, they'll hear it. So, Mike, uh, Christian, if you could bring up that. There we go. Thank you, Christian. Okay, uh, so as Susie mentioned, this item is a conditional use permit. Uh, it is advertised as a public hearing item. So there will be a public hearing following the presentation. And uh, there has been uh, a number of correspondence that we've received. And just to be sure, all the late correspondence has been loaded up online and is available there if need be, if anybody wanted to access that. Um, this is for Elroy's Mexican Express mobile food vendor. The file number is CUP 22-027. Uh, the project is located 505 through 525. There are several parcels involved, uh, Santa Rosa Avenue. If you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, this slide is just indicating where the project site is located. It's at the uh, southwest corner of Santa Rosa Avenue and uh, Sebastopol Avenue. And as you can see, or I don't know if you can see well, there are several parcels involved in this particular project site and are included within it. The project zoning, is a commercial mixed use 
uh, as well as a general plan as a core mixed use general plan land use. Um, the surrounding land uses uh, are also, I'm sorry, the, the surrounding zones or zoning are also predominantly commercial mixed use. So if you can go to the next slide, please. This is uh, just a neighborhood context map. Uh, the nice big red star shows where the project site is located. Uh, and then to the west are some single family residents. To the south is a used car lot. To the north is a small market and is also where there will be an offsite bathroom accessible for this particular project. And then to the east are some boarded up uh, residences and then also uh, and auto repair use. So if you can go to the next slide, please. So this slide uh, and then the next one following are just giving some indication of what's on site right now. Uh, in the upper left corner is from the kind of the Southeast corner. It's basically taken from Santa Rosa Avenue, looking towards Sebastopol Road uh, or, or Sebastopol Avenue. And you can see that there are a few small buildings on the site. Not, I don't believe they're presently used. Um, uh, and then as you go from the upper left to the lower left, you're just moving along Santa Rosa Avenue. Uh, and then to the upper right, again, it's a closer view of those two buildings. And then in the lower right corner, you'll see the intersection and the uh, curb return with the ADA ramp and the crosswalk. Uh, at the intersection of Sebastopol and Santa Rosa Avenue. And if you go to the next slide, please. This is just a picture of what's across the street to the north. If you were to follow that crosswalk to the north, um, this is what it lies di almost directly in front of it, uh, a little bit off to the left. And uh, this is where the toilet or the bathroom would be available for the project use that's on site. And then the uh, picture at the lower right hand corner is just showing uh, again the project site just from a different angle on site. And I believe this is looking north and there's an existing tree on site. And then you can see also a couple uh, of the storage containers that are there. Uh, next slide, please. So again, just to reiterate what the project is for, it's uh, one new mobile food vendor which by the way is a permitted use in the commercial mixed use zone. Um, and if you were to look in the zone, you would see that as a listed as a permitted use uh, with a minor conditional use permit being required. So that's why we're here. Uh, there is no on-site dining at this point, it's takeout only. Initially, the project did propose some, some on-site seating, but that has been since been removed from the site are in the project description. So currently as proposed, it's takeout only. The uh, hours of operation proposed are from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, and then until midnight Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, there's no current use on site. The two buildings there are, are vacant as we know it. Uh, the mobile food vendor um, is to park the mobile food truck in front of that blue building that you saw on the previous slides. So it is blocked. If you were in one of the residences directly to the west, you would not even see the mobile food truck as that building would block the view. Uh, there are approximately 27 parking spaces proposed, which is ample parking for what's required. And then again, the bathroom for the employees, and it is employee uh, it, at this point, it's an employee bathroom only, and that's across the street. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, I'm reiterating some things, but I just want to show this in a plan view. Again, it's a commercial mixed use zone. There are 27 parking spaces that were proposed. There are the two unused buildings. The bathroom is across the street. And if you see that uh, arrow, you can see where it is in relation to where the mobile food truck will be. And uh, there is a buffer to the nearest homes. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's residences to the west. There's also a residence uh, across the street on Sebastopol Road. And that would be uh, just to the west of the bathroom facility that's proposed for the use of this project. Uh, and if you can go to the next slide, please. 
So just to give a history of it, the project was advertised for a public meeting before the zoning administrator on September 1st. Uh, based on a request from the public, the project was then scheduled for a public hearing on September 15th, uh, 2022. Due to an error in the on-site public hearing notice, uh, the signs, the, the Zoom meeting ID number uh, was in error and the project was removed from the agenda. And so today we have a new public hearing um, and that's what we're here for. The uh, public hearing today has been requested by the public and all public comments received to date have been forwarded and considered by the zoning administrator. So even if you didn't see your, uh, for some reason, although all of the emails should be there, but if for some reason you didn't see your email there, uh, it had all the emails have been forwarded to the zoning administrator uh, for their for her consideration. So if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so we've received a number of emails, and that's why I mentioned that little comment about hopefully uh, that you've your your email has been received and passed along. So the public comments include this full list, and I'll just briefly go through them. Uh, hours of operation have been a concern and also expressed as a positive for the project. Uh, there's uh, comments regarding the project enlivening the area and that it would be an asset. There's comments received regarding noise in nearby residential uses uh, as being a negative, and there's concerns expressed for noise. Um, there's comments received as a uh, project is a needed use to bring more people and traffic to the area. And uh, there's comment received regarding narrow streets and on street parking, and as well, multiple driveways and sidewalks on site. There's concerns received for poor lighting on site, concerns received for impacts to the nearby restaurants, a brick and mortar restaurant, uh, concerns regarding uh, well, actually, this was offered as a positive, not a concern. Uh, it, this project would offer a unique experience and some good food. Uh, and then also concern regarding alcohol and nearby uh, bars, which were expressed as concern. The concern with the alcohol was that people, uh, which, by the way, to, to mention here, there will be no on-site sale of alcohol. So that is not included in the project at all. Uh, but the concern here that was expressed had to do with people being at nearby bars and then coming here and the concern that they might be intoxicated and there might be issues related to that. Uh, there was issues regarding trash in the neighborhood, an issue that, uh, again, the, that's not an issue, I'm sorry, a positive, that the, the project itself would be positive for the area and would help to activate the Santa Rosa Avenue corridor. And then that the project would ultimately uh, I'm sorry, not the project, but some neighbors expressed that they would ultimately like to see this site used for shopping and multi-story housing. Uh, where I had seen that comment, those were people both in favor of the project and people who were against the project. So there's there's a, a I don't know if it's a concern. It's more that people have an anticipation that they would like to see ultimately some shopping and multi-story housing at the project site. Uh, so you can go to the next slide, please. Um, it, just, just to uh, highlight that there are standard conditions of approval for a project like this. And uh, the standard conditions of approval would address most, if not all of the comments that have been received. Um, so the standard conditions to run through them, uh, the location of the mobile food vendor, which is shown on the site plan, uh, that will only be permitted one mobile food vendor on the site, and the location is fixed. Um, there is covered trash, recycling, and compost containers with instructions in both English and Spanish as a requirement. Those will also be on site next to the food truck, and those will be removed on a daily basis, as will the food truck itself. Uh, there won't be any amplified music as a condition of approval, and uh, it, it wouldn't be used to promote the use itself unless there was a special event which could be permitted by the city under a separate request. Uh, the noise levels 
by the project are to meet the city noise requirements. The project cannot inhibit or uh, block traffic or circulation and must maintain adequate parking on site. Uh, the project cannot sell alcoholic beverages. If you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, the site is always to be maintained in a clean and hazard-free condition. And then all, all mobile food vending equipment must be to be stored offsite or within an, or within an approved enclosed structure after hours. So all of the, the equipment brought onto the site will be removed or put away each night. And then if you can go to the next slide, please. So those are all standard conditions of approval. And then there were some additional conditions of approval that have been added to this project to address concerns that were received. So at this point, the attached resolution is making a recommendation that the hours of operation would operate Sunday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And the applicant is uh, accepting of this condition. The next uh, condition uh, that we are providing is that the Fridays and Saturdays, it would go from 10 a.m. until midnight, which is as, uh, sorry, that's as originally requested. Um, the next one is that the owner will have to notify police of any illegal activity immediately uh, as it's occurring on the site. And uh, just as an FYI, the police department is located right down the road, although um, you still would have to make the call. It's um, approximately a quarter mile down the road, half quarter to half mile down the road. Uh, if noise levels are not met, other protective measure, measures uh, can be taken to correct the noise issues. So hopefully there won't be any noise issues, but if something occurs, there's a condition that would allow staff to take protective measures to correct any issue that arises. Uh, as far as parking and access, staff has recommended a uh, revised parking site plan, if you will, which is also included in the packet. And the parking that staff is proposing would actually require like a post and cable, low lying post and cable fencing to be installed along the perimeter of what's existing as a paved surface area. And that's essentially what's shown as the parking on site. And then that would thereby limit access to two driveways. So access to this project would be limited to the single driveway on Sebastopol Road closest to Santa Rosa Avenue. And then it would also limit access to that driveway, which is furthest to the south on Santa Rosa Avenue. Uh, the post and cable system also helps protect as a barrier uh, the, oh, I'm sorry, um, it, it would prevent the um, cars that would pull into the site from pulling back around the, the back of the site, even where there's no uh, parked or paved area, it would be easy for cars to just simply drive around the back and it, it's not controlled in any way currently as it's shown. And so that is why uh, we've recommended that low-lying post and cable system. And if you can go to the next slide, please. So the staff revision also shows that there will only be 21 parking spaces. We've recommended the removal of uh, six of the parking spaces that are directly west of the location where the mobile food vendor would be. And I don't know if you can see the arrow there well or not, or I'm sorry, across, but um, basically just to the south of the entrance on Sebastopol Road, uh, there's a bay of parking there that would be removed per the recommendation of staff. And then there's also roll stops uh, that are um, both proposed and I, I wanted to make sure that they were shown too. So you can see the red roll stops that would have to be installed for the parking spaces to protect the um, pedestrian uh, area or corridor right there on the sidewalk. And if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, again, this project is exempt as both a class one and class four project under the CEQA guidelines. It's a mobile food vendor that will use existing facilities and it involves negligible or no expansion. It's a minor temporary use of land having negligible or no permanent effects on the environment. So uh, with that, if you can go to the next slide. 
therefore, we are basically recommending that the zoning administrator approve the minor conditional use permit uh, and to allow the operation of the mobile food vendor subject to those conditions of approval in the attached resolution, which include those conditions referred to above. And I also wanted to mention that there's a recommended modification to the resolution itself. It's a very minor uh, change, but we needed to clean up the header. Uh, there's an APN, assessor's parcel number, at the top that is incorrectly labeled as uh, the, the extension of it is 063, and it would be changed to 065 to be sure that we get the uh, correct APN on that. And that's it for my presentation. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. And I know that the uh, applicant is also available and online here. Thank you for the presentation. I, I actually do have some clarifying questions. Um, first, uh, um, let me start with, um, will, will more lighting be installed on site as part of this project? Uh, it, it will be revamped. So there is existing on-site lighting and the existing on-site lighting will be improved with new light heads and will have to meet the requirements of zoning code for the amount of light that's provided on-site. Okay. Um, all righty. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about the on-site storage containers. And this is probably a, a, a question for the applicant team. If we know the status of those, uh, what they're used for, if they need to be there. <laughs> I'm curious about those. Is the is the the team on? Mike? I thought they were. Maybe uh, if they could applicant team, if you can raise your hands so that staff can elevate you so you can speak. Uh, Mike is P Eric Anderson or Paul Gilger. Are they part of your applicant team? Yes. Oh. It's Eric Anderson here. Can you hear me? We sure can, Eric. Yeah. Um, so the question is about the existing buildings on the site? No, the, the actually storage containers that were in the um, photographs. I'm curious about those. Are they being used? Or is... Yeah, they're being used by by for storage for uh, the Astro Motel. Okay, okay. Um, and then I wanted uh, actually, if we could clarify the hours again for the mobile uh, food truck, because um, it in one slide it said till eleven o'clock, and the other till ten p.m. on on Sunday through Thursday. So. If you could yeah, clarify if I, and I, I can clarify that, Eric. Um, the 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 project application was submitted with hours uh, from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday or sorry, Sunday through Thursday, and then on Friday and Saturday, it would the hours would extend to midnight. The staff recommendation is that the project would have hours of operation that would go no longer than 10 p.m. Uh, Sunday through Thursday, and then also on Friday and Saturday, it would extend to midnight. Okay, so the hours, if the, if we approve the resolution as is, I think there's a condition in there that allows the hours of operation from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., right, on Sunday through Thursday, and then Friday and Saturday nights from 10 a.m. till midnight. Correct. Okay, good. Um, I would like to say that the public correspondence that I read should be exactly what any member of the public read because I read, took it right off the, um, the agenda. And I also saw late correspondence that was posted yesterday. So I, I just wanted to throw that out. I wanted to ask a question of the applicant team and verify that the Restrooms will be available until midnight for the entire time the, um, the truck is, is in operation? That is correct. Okay. 
And then I have another question, and it's kind of a security question. How many staff members will be working uh, during the night shift at, at the truck? Uh, Susie, this is Paul Gilger here. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Roy Cabrera is on the line with this. Uh, Roy, if you can hear us, if you'd unmute yourself. And you could answer Susie's question. Yes, I can hear you. Can you guys hear me? There we go. Yeah. How you doing? Yes. Yeah, so to answer your question, uh, we're talking from four to six employees uh, per shift. So that would cover the nighttime shift. Great. That's good to hear. Um, Let's see. Uh, I understand that originally, originally there were um, uh, the original project had seating accommodations for 72 people. And then I take it that through public comment, the public comment process that the the seating was taken out of the project. Is that is that the way that worked, Mike? Uh, yeah, it, it was essentially as a result of uh, uh, public comments that had been received, and then also uh, that was a desire of the applicant to remove it at that that point in time. So they were responding to those comments. Okay, I, I that that leaves me a little uneasy. I I have a a concern about people just standing and eating, and maybe you know just you know when I get my food, I like to eat it hot. <laughs> so. I would, I would like to add, oh, well, let's wait. I would like to hear from the public real, real quick. And I know we've got several people that would like to speak on this. So those are my clarifying questions for now. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and, and ask the applicant team to please mute themselves again and open up the public hearing. If you're a member of the public wishing to speak, please select the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen. If you're calling in, please dial star nine. Thea um, Daniels, I'm gonna send you a prompt to unmute yourself. Please state your name for the record. Thea Daniels. You can go ahead, Thea. Thank you. I live on Oak Street, and there was a radar machine put up that I believe may have been a result of this meeting. It does not represent the traffic in the area. Most of the time it did not work for the week that it was here, and it relied on solar and it was put in a shady location. So if in fact you guys did that, uh, we would need to have the traffic uh, radar put back again for better representation. I live in the Burbank Gardens neighborhood. The arts district is the side that this is proposed to be put on. There's also the Prince Greenway area and then Juilliard Park, which creates music, fundraisers and car shows, plus many other opportunities to create a wonderful corridor for Santa Rosa. Uh, I am not for this particular project because I feel that the hours are definitely not agreeable for neighborhood and residential communities. There, um, it's a waste of space, quality space for downtown. After seeing this, there's a lot of mixed use spaces a truck is a waste of that quality space for a corridor that could be very positive. The bathrooms will attract public use. Two times I heard Mike mention at this point, which to me suggests a temporary you know, appeasement. Uh, the first one was that the employees will use the, the bathroom only at this point. And the second was at this point, there is no outside dining. I, uh, this, this also will take away from the existing businesses that are there. We have brick and mortar businesses that are restaurants and other successful little businesses putting in something 
tacky and temporary, such as a food truck, really takes away from the amazing opportunity we have as a corridor. I believe that this will negatively impact the residential communities, not just one side of the street or the other. So I would love to suggest again that we have a meeting that includes the businesses and the residents to help create a proposal for the downtown corridor to enhance and positively improve something permanent for the downtown Santa Rosa community. That's what I have to say. I uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Thea. Uh, next we have Mark Jansen. I'm gonna send you a prompt to unmute yourself. And can you please state your name for the record? Hmm. I don't know if anybody else is having a problem, but I can't understand. Mark, can you try speaking again? I think it might be a good idea, Mark, for you to try and dial in. Lonnie, can you please provide the dial in information? And if you could kind of say it slowly so he has time to write it down, that would be great. And we can go on with other speakers. And when he's back on on the telephone, we can, we can hear from him then. Yes, of course. Um, so Mark, you can dial in via telephone. The phone number is 877. 853-5257. And the meeting ID is 823-7945-4104. And when you call in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Okay, let's go to the next speaker, please. All right, All right. so next we have uh, Gig Hital. Sorry if I uh, butchered your, your name a little bit there. I'm gonna give you permissions to speak and if you could please state your name for the record. My name is Gig Hidal. I live at 308 Santa Rosa Avenue. I can see the property from my front yard and I will email you these comments. My neighbors and I are concerned about the potential for harmful negative behavior by the public that may occur because of the size and location of the property. The way to prevent these problems is to condition the property so that it does not become a hangout. Condition one, the business shall operate as a takeout food and beverage vendor only. No food or beverages may be consumed on the property. Customers drive up, place their orders and drive off the property. Condition two, no parking of vehicles except the business delivery vehicles on the property. Condition three, the parking lot shall be painted with no parking spaces at all, but instead driving lanes going up and back to accommodate a possible line of several cars waiting to place orders. Condition four, paint lines for customers who are on bicycles or walking to place orders and then leave. The second problem is the hours of operation. Open late at night will affect neighborhood residents. Our neighborhood includes Juilliard Park, open till 9 p.m. during daylight savings time and 6 p.m. during Pacific Standard Time. Condition five, set the hours of operation for this business to 9 p.m. during daylight savings time and 6 p.m. during Pacific Standard Time. The third set of problems includes drug dealing, prostitution, and gang activity. Condition six, the business shall erect a large sign that specifies that drug dealing, prostitution, flashing gang signs, shouting gang challenges, yelling, fighting, and using weapons is prohibited. If such behaviors occur, the manager shall speak to the people involved to inform them that such behavior is prohibited. The fourth problem is that homeless people may become attracted to this public site and may set up tents to sleep overnight. 
Condition seven, if anyone starts to set up a tent on the property, the manager of the business shall immediately speak to the person to inform them that tents and overnight sleeping on the property are prohibited. The fifth problem is that this property could become an attraction for gang tag graffiti. The business, condition eight, the business staff, staff shall remove or paint over all graffiti on the same day that is discovered. The sixth problem is that the project will be materially injurious to persons in the vicinity because it will take customers away from Taqueria Las Palmas, a model operation and positive influence on our neighborhood and hurt them financially. It is the zoning administrator's responsibility to condition a property to prevent materially injurious conditions to others. Condition nine, Taqueria Las Palmas will prepare a list of their four most profitable dishes on their menu, identifying them specifically, and the owner of the proposed business will sign a non-competition agreement to omit those four items from the new business menu. Conditional use okay, permit. I'm, I'm sorry, the three, your three minutes, your three minutes is up, and I look forward to seeing your comments um, in writing. If you'd like them to be part of the public record, you're welcome to go ahead and send them to the project planner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for commenting. Zoning Administrator Murray, give me just a minute here to get resituated. Okay. Zoning Administrator Murray, can you see my screen? Yes, I can with the three minute clock ready to go. Awesome, okay. Uh, next we have Laura Fennell. Can you please state your name for the record? And I'm gonna send you a prompt to, prompt to unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Laura Fennell and I also am a neighbor in the Burbank Gardens neighborhood. And I attended lots and lots of meetings over the last 10 years on uh, both the uh, station area plan, the Santa Rosa corridor plan, the gateway plan, all the plans that we have talked about and what our desires as neighbors and, um, and residents are for that area from us, uh, Highway 12 all the way up to Sonoma Avenue. And nothing in any of the plans ever talked about our goal for the neighborhood having food trucks on Santa Rosa Avenue. Um, I think that the property owner hasn't made any attempts to sell this property or to offer it up to do something that would be um, in line with what the zoning and what would be allowed for that, that piece of land. And this is a way for him to hold on to the property until something better comes along and then uh, ditch it. And so this is a parking thing for him to be able to have this food truck there until it's not convenient for him anymore. And he decides that he wants to move on to something bigger and better. And I just think it comes at the expense of our neighborhood. And it comes at the expense of um, that gateway area that we have talked in meetings and that the city has talked endlessly about being the gateway to Santa Rosa and this is the area that we want to highlight and we're not going to have auto sales there anymore and we're not going to have you know a lot of different things that we talked about with zoning and now I think this is a huge mistake and I think it injures um, other businesses and I see it just not being at all what we wanted and I think I would like to see the owner make an attempt to sell the property if he's unable to do anything better with that land than put a food truck on it. Um, I think that we already have a problem with homeless people. And the biggest problem that I have is the, uh, I live on Oak Street and Oak Street has now become like a, an on-ramp onto Highway 12 off Santa Rosa Avenue. People don't wanna go up Bennett Valley. They don't wanna wait for the light and they don't wanna have to cross over. And so Oak Street, Almost every neighbor on the 600 block has had a car, their car hit, has had an animal lost, has 
had, um, you know, pet lost, it's, it's bad. People drive up our street a million miles an hour and it's become a junior highway. And um, not that all of the streets aren't impacted, but Oak would particularly be impacted because it's a straight way up onto the highway. And for, you know, traffic at midnight and, and late hours, it would, be, it would be a real problem. I would hate to see this approved. I think it's everything that we didn't want in all of those meetings that we held over the years. That's it. Thank you for your comments. Okay, next we have Juan Arbayo. Um, I'm gonna send you a prompt to unmute yourself. And can you please state your name for the record? Bueno, me escucha, me escucha. I think we may need um, some assistance from Charles, Lonnie. Bueno. Charles, can you, can bueno, you switch no, yourself no, no, no. over? Bueno. Me escucha? Uno momento, Juan. Okay. Charles, we can hear you. Gotcha. Uh, Juan, um, uh, estamos lista? Sí. Escucho. Sí, estoy listo. Sí, estoy listo. Lonnie, are we supposed to be able to hear Charles? Sí. Juan, uno momento. Okay. Sí, también. Charles, can you please guide me? Um, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here. I think it might be wise to take a, a cup, a, maybe a, a four, four or five minute break and, and come back. Um, and that way we can figure out the technology challenges we're having right now. Would that be helpful, Lonnie? Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, let's take a five minute break and we can work out our, our challenges and we'll be right back. If everybody could just please be patient. Hey, espérame, es que ya me voy a agarrar la nuca, ya voy a comentar, nomás que tomar un break de cinco minutos, ya me, ya me tiene, ya voy, a, ya voy a comentar. Oye, si quieres te pido una cosa, sí. ya, ya me van a agarrar, ya me tienen, me tienen espera porque... Si quieren... Hasta que lo corto, pero así ya me dijo la señora, eh, hey, Juan, dile que estoy listo, pero... Eh, ya, okay.
Okay, I think we may have this straightened out and I apologize if this was me not knowing how to work our technology. So I have hit the English icon at the bottom of my screen. Thank you, Charles. We can hear you. So Juan, Charles, can you ask Juan to please um, I, uh, go ahead and give us a Lonnie, if you can set the timer. Yes, Zoning See? Administrator Murray, I will give Juan some direction. See? Hola, Juan. Um, Hola. Adelante, ahora. Lo siento. Okay. No está bien. ¿Ya puedo hablar? ¿Ya puedo comenzar? Sí. sí. Adelante, por favor. Ok. Hola, yo soy Juan, soy un, el, uno de los dueños de aquí de la taquería de Las Palmas, junto con mi hermano Luis. Oh, ¿Todavía no? Hola, yo soy Juan de aquí de la taquería de Las Palmas. Somos socios junto con mi hermano Luis. Y mi, pues, lo, la verdad, pues no estamos de acuerdo porque a, supuestamente a los códigos que dice la ciudad ni un ataco otro puede estar dentro de la ciudad estacionado durante 20 minutos. Nosotros lo sabemos desde hace, nosotros tenemos aquí casi 20 años y pues la verdad no se nos hace justo que vengan y pongan un ataco otro cerca de nosotros porque la verdad pues nosotros hemos batallado mucho aquí para, para estar aquí estables. Pasamos la pandemia, pasamos tantas cosas, ¿me entienden? Y es una de las cosas que no vemos nosotros bien. Y otra de las cosas no se compara todos los gastos que tiene uno con un ataco otro, porque ellos, nosotros tenemos que pagar todo el piso, todo lo que pagamos por equipo de mesas adentro del restaurante, todo lo que pagamos, pagamos muchos impuestos a, por este local, ¿me entiendes? Y no es justo que venga y parque en un ataco otro aquí a un lado de nosotros, que lo más le van a pagar cuánto, no, no, no sé cuánto van a pagar de renta, pero no lo van a pagar, no van a tener los mismos gastos que nosotros, y es una de las razones, yo pienso, que por eso la ciudad y todos lo, los locales de aquí, de los, los negocios alrededor, no estamos de acuerdo porque nosotros, ¿me entiendes? Es más gasto y, y para mantenernos aquí, ¿me entiendes? Y no se nos hace justo porque pues, nosotros tenemos tantos años aquí y aparte, pues, a rato también pues, nos va a afectar porque si hay vandalismo también en las noches y eso, pues nos va a afectar a nosotros también porque apenas... Es, se limpió todo aquí desde que nosotros abrimos, había mucho más vandalismo, ya se ha estado más limpio aquí en la comunidad y aparte pues va a traer más cosas más mal, más mal a pienso y por pues, la verdad, pues es una de las razones que nosotros vemos mal por, por eso, porque nosotros hemos tenido tantos años aquí pues y pues estamos todavía, ¿me entiendes?, estableciéndonos por, por todo lo que pasó del COVID y todo eso y la verdad pues no se nos hace justo eso de que pongan un taco troca aquí a un lado de nosotros, ¿entiendes? Si fuera como, otro, no sé, pero ¿me entiendes? No sé qué pueden hacer otra cosa ahí, como apartamentos, otras cosas, ¿me entiendes? Porque el segundo, que lo basa del código de la ciudad, ellos no pueden estar estacionados aquí adentro de la ciudad. Una, un taco troca o, o un camión de comida no pueden estar aquí adentro. Pues lo más nosotros por eso estamos aquí apoyándonos, porque pues no estamos de acuerdo. Pues muchas gracias por dejarme hablar, pues que tenga buen día, pues estaremos otra vez si se hace otro mini no podemos o no sé si tenemos que ir a la ciudad o otra reunión pero muchas gracias por dejarme hablar que tenga buen día
bueno, soy yo otra vez, o, o no sé, solo que se volvió a activar el, el timer, el tiempo, digo, no sé si, si no se tomó la otra la primera vez en el tiempo, o si no se tomó, pues yo soy el dueño de la Tatería de las Palmas, junto con mi hermano somos socios, José Luis Arballo, y pues la verdad, pues no estamos de acuerdo con eso que está sucediendo, de que quieren poner, estacionar una... Es, un... es, es, I'm sorry, can I, can I, is that Juan speaking still, or again? Okay, so the it, one's three minutes are up. So there, if we can, we can mute one. And if we can, I'm sorry, Charles, if you could go ahead and I understand. Got, I heard what you said so far, but I think he said more in his three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Juan. Zoning Administrator Murray, can you hear me? I can hear you and it looks like you're rebooting the three minute screen. Uh, yes, but before we move on to um, the next comment, can you please summarize what was said? Um, the public streaming on YouTube could not hear. Okay, uh, there was, I'm going to summarize, there was some concern about putting a, um, a taco truck near an existing uh, um, Mexican food restaurant, Las Palmas, on Santa Rosa Avenue. Um, there was concern that the uh, food truck is not um, required to pay the same types of taxes and, and what have you. There was concern about vandalism um, resurfacing in the area because of the, the food truck um, use. Um, and I, I think that that summarizes it pretty, <laughs> very much summarizes it. <clears throat> very short. I, 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 yeah, I hope that helps. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we can move on um, with other public comment now. Um, so caller 9793, if I'm going to send you a prompt, if you could press star six, that will unmute yourself. Please state your name for the record. Gloria Lopez. Okay, Gloria, go ahead. Yes, um, my family and I, we live on Sebastopol Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, our little community already has a unique dining experience in our Taqueria Las Palmas, which our little community, community absolutely loves. Um, they've been in business for almost 20 years and have had only a very positive impact in our area. Um, we would love to protect them from financial impact 
They are local business owners, not out of the area investors, which I think the city of Santa Rosa needs to support. Um, additionally, we already have serious parking issues due to the success of our Spinster Sisters uh, restaurant. And um, lastly, we have plenty of taco trucks already on Sebastopol Road. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. So before we move on to the next person, um, for anybody who came in late, I know that with the translator, things got a little bit confusing. Um, so for those of you who joined us late, there's a globe at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you select that, and then you can select English or Spanish, um, then you'll be able to hear everything that's going on. And I know where that globe is now, and I'm happy to hit the button if you ask. All right, um, so next we have Ellen. Ellen, can you please state your name for the record? And I'm gonna send you a prompt to unmute yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, my name is Heather O'Dell and I'm actually uh, here with my partner, we're on together. Um, we live on Mill Street and um, while we were not included in the emails or the notifications and I will interject at this point that I do believe that the sign that was put down on Santa Rosa Avenue, uh, it was removed for um, some sort of language difficulties. It wasn't, uh, wasn't correct. Uh, it was removed, I think, on the 12th and it was not put up until um, I don't know exactly when, but uh, it's supposed to be 10 days and it was not 10 days. So I just make that comment. As far as I'm concerned, this meeting should have been pushed another two weeks. But since we're going ahead, I'll, I'll make my comments brief. As I said, we do live on Mill Street. Um, most of our neighborhood in the Burbank Gardens neighborhood is one side of the street parking only. When we are all home from work, uh, it is impossible to um, drive quickly down our streets and we all know kind of how to navigate, but those who are not from our neighborhood have raced through our neighborhood trying to get onto the freeway only to figure out that uh, you bump into Henley Street and then you can't actually go straight through to South E or get on the freeway. Um, we have had vehicles hit from nine o'clock at night to midnight, hit and run. One of our vehicles was totaled. The other one was smashed up pretty well. I know folks have been um, hit. I know that uh, animals have been hit and killed. And again, I will reiterate, this is a very, very poor plan from a parking standpoint. My insurance has been to our house. Our agent has been there and said that this is a catastrophe waiting to happen. And if we begin to file claims in mass, our entire neighborhood risks having higher insurance premiums because we will be uh, in a higher um, accident uh, um, area. Um, secondly, Las Palmas, as uh, Gloria said, Las Palmas has a fabulous um, restaurant. We all support them. We walk towards them. Um, and um, I, again, think that uh, revitalizing Santa Rosa Avenue does not include a food truck. We need to come up with something better, a local market with some affordable housing on top, where we can all walk from both sides of Santa Rosa Avenue to patron a small market like community market. Um, we could all get behind that and we could support that. Um, so I think uh, we need to think this through better and, and Burbank Gardens neighborhood needs to be involved in the planning and um, uh, think about what's gonna impact us as well as Las Palmas. Thank you. Thank you. And if your partner would like to also make comments. Uh, yeah, if I could, that would be great. Uh, my name is Ellen Berry. I live on Mill Street and um, pretty much have same concerns. Uh, both of my vehicles were hit and run 
in the uh, midnight uh, to uh, you know 1 a.m. time zone and uh, by people who were drunk and speeding around the neighborhood and don't live in the neighborhood. Um, I love Las Palmas. They're great people and we would hate to see them go out of business or uh, you know have any financial troubles. It was hard enough getting through COVID, uh, but they're still there and good for them. Um, mainly it's parking, noise, um, and anything else that goes along with that, pretty much what everyone else has said, Laura, Gig, um, uh, Bea, um, I'm in agreement with all of that. And uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Do we have any more hands raised? Yes. yes, sorry, give me a minute. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> next we have uh, Francis Fuchsia. Uh, apologies for butchering your name. Um, I'm gonna send you a prompt to unmute yourself. And can you please state your name for the record? Hi, yes, thank you. This is Francis Fuchs and I am a resident on Wheeler Street in the block right there adjacent to this site. So I'm just kitty corner and I hear a lot of things that go on there. And my major concern is how late this um, truck would be there. Uh, it, it, I don't have in, in general objections to food trucks in principle, but this situation would definitely disturb my peace. There's nothing else in the area that's opened till 10 or midnight, which would be even worse. So it's like restaurants don't stay open that late, only bars stay open that late. So the noise disturbance will really be a problem. I keep my windows open at night when I sleep and I hear everything that goes on on Santa Rosa Avenue. So people coming and going late, even on the weekend is going to be a disturbance for me. So I would really want them to close up by nine um, like most restaurants do. Who's going to be coming after nine in any case? Um, certainly not families looking for dinner. Uh, that's generally not the case between nine and midnight. So that's a big concern of mine, um, as well as the traffic and the parking. We only have one-sided parking here as well, and, um, and it can be a real problem. And I also just echo people's concerns about Taqueria Las Palmas. Um, they're just a lovely place and I would hate to see them be impacted ne negatively. So it does feel like it would be quite a change in our neighborhood and not in a good way, um, particularly with those hours. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Luis. I'm going to send you a prompt to unmute yourself, and can you please state your name for the record? Hola, mi nombre es José Luis. Excuse me, do I, need, do I need to hit the globe again? Susie, you should be good to go. Um, Luis, uh, adelante, ahora. Ok, mi nombre es José Luis, soy el dueño de la taquería Las Palmas con mi hermano, somos los dueños de ahí, y la verdad que no se me hace justo lo que están haciendo con esa, con esa carreta, porque no son los mismos gastos que tenemos nosotros a los que tienen ellos. Entonces ellos se van y, y se, se, nomás llegan y se van, y nosotros tenemos que quedarnos ahí a pagar los empleados, pagar luz, pagar todos los impuestos. Entonces no creo que sea algo correcto que quieran hacer la ciudad, dar un permiso de esa magnitud. ¿Sí me escuchan? Escucha, Luis. Um, un momento. Charles, can you translate? I see. Um, lo siento, Luis. Um, ¿Quieres 
continuar? Mm, sí. Y la verdad que muchas gracias a todos los, 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 el, los vecinos por su apoyo y la verdad que pues no estoy de acuerdo con lo que quieren hacer con nosotros ahí. O sea, el negocio que quieren hacer a un lado, si, si fabricaran un, una, un, un edificio y se pusieran ahí, la verdad que no tuviera problema yo de nada para que gastaran los mismos gastos que nosotros. Thank you very much, Luis, for your comments and your translation, Charles. Um, and Susie, do you mind summarizing that for those streaming on YouTube again? Yes, so the sum summarizing those comments, um, again, Las, Las Palmas restaurant is, they're concerned that the, 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 the truck, the food truck would not have the same overhead um, expenses, including utilities, um, rent, et cetera and that they would have no problem if there was a brick and mortar restaurant being proposed at this location. Their, their issue is, is um, more specific to the food truck because it's not, it's not burdened with the same financial issues as a uh, restaurant. Thank you. Uh, we can move on to the next comment. Uh, Melanie Eduardes. I'm going to send you a prompt to unmute yourself and please state your name for the record. Hi, Ashley, I'm her fiance. Sorry for the backboard noise, so doing step outside cleaning. Uh, but, um, my name's Adam. I'm using my fiance's Zoom to pitch in. Um, the, for the side shows at late night, if we have this food truck, because these side shows, graffiti, and a whole bunch of bad stuff at night. Plus, the last promise, I love going to last promise. I bought my fiance, I bought my mom, we got other people that I bought business to. I plus the neighborhood, we have family or good close friends that live still. And I can see this business going after a business and the other businesses as well. Now you got the Spencer sisters down the street. You got another breakfast in a place across the street. Although they all only open for a few hours and other close restaurants close by. But I will always continue to go to Las Palmas because they'll make great food. This truck should be long though. And a while ago we had another person talk about the food trucks that's possible road. I used to live down that area. I can't tell you how many food trucks I saw. I got one night, one time I buy it, like 15, 20 years ago, I counted like eight Mexican trucks on that road. And by bringing this one in for like 20 minutes or even more, that just adds another food truck to a place that we don't need normal food trucks. And I will not support this food truck at all, just due to um, yeah. I, just, I won't not support this food truck being built. I'm against it. You got games. You got a whole bunch of stuff that our city AT had worked so hard to convince and not be built and support Luis and his brother. Let's promise. I love that place. I hate to see that place go out of business. And I was been, I go to my most every week or every other week just to get food. So please don't allow, please don't allow this to happen. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, Marlene, I'm going to send you a prompt and if you can please state your name for the record. Mar Marlene, I sent you a prompt to unmute yourself. Um, it says that you're still muted. Zoning Administrator Murray, she put her hand down. Mm -hmm. um, Marlene, if, you, if you'd still like to talk, would you please raise your hand again? And if we need to take a pause while you call in, we can. Huh. It looks like her hand is down. And I don't see any other hands. Do you, Lonnie? Oh, I do. Somebody else just raised a hand. Uh, Debbie, I'm gonna send you a prompt to unmute yourself. And can you please state your name for the record? Hi, um, my name is Debbie Elliott. Uh, my mother and I live at 621 Mill Street. So sort of cat a corner from that project area. Um, I'm not going to repeat everything that everyone else has said, their objections, because they've done a good job and we agree with all of them. I do want to raise a couple of issues, though, that hasn't specifically been mentioned. Um, with regard to Las Palmas and the food truck, um, I do want to say that uh, Elroy's is heavily, heavily promoted in Sonoma and Santa Rosa and in um, uh, Sonoma County in um, publications and, and so on. In fact, I did a quick Google search this morning and four plus pages of links to um, social media and so on um, for Elroy's. And there were 11 links for Las Palmas. And I just think that level of competition is in that location is absolutely unacceptable. The, the neighborhood supports Las Palmas and we want them to do well and we want to continue to support them. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that despite how close San Rosa PD is to our neighborhood, I can tell you that it is my experience that they are not necessarily on top of it when it comes to responding to disturbances. Recently, uh, last week or the week before, uh, there was a large fireworks um, display and activity. Very loud, very close to us. We, uh, we actually think it was um, maybe on the next block or the block after. I called the police department and I know several other people called the police department. Um, I went across the street to BJ's, asked them if they could tell where it was coming from. There was no response ever from the police department. So, so in terms of um, the uh, you know Elroy's management calling the police if there's uh, are issues on the property, um, there's no guarantee that there will be a response and then it will be addressed. So that's the other. That's the second thing. The third thing is. Um, Mr. Anderson has made it clear that he wants an entertainment venue on one of the lots that he owns. And I think that it is, um, that, that is a question that is um, entirely inappropriate for our neighborhood. And uh, I think the Elroy's is a, a step in that direction that is unacceptable. That's my comment, thank you. Thank you for making comments. And I think at this point, whoops, yeah, all hands are, no more hands are raised. And we, yeah, uh, wait, one more hand just came up. 
If if you are, can I just ask that anybody listening, if you are wanting to speak, if you could raise your hands um, now so that we can anticipate them, it would be really helpful. Um, and Lonnie, we look like we have another new hand raised. Thank you. Uh, Leslie Fontes, I'm gonna send you a prompt to unmute yourself. And can you please state your name for the record? Hello, hello. This is Leslie Fontes. Um, I'm nervous, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I live at 624 Mill Street and I agree with everything that everyone said about this negatively impacting our neighborhood. And it honestly saddens me that the city would even uh, think that this would be a positive uh, presentation of the corridor to our downtown of Santa Rosa. Um, this is a temporary situation for another, a bigger plan that I know won't benefit our neighborhood. And that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Zoning Administrator Murray, I do not see any hands raised at this time. I don't either. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing. I do have um, a number of comments and questions, uh, both for the project planner and for the applicant team. <clears throat> um, first, I'm gonna start with the project planner. I've, I've, I've never heard of it happening. And I too, for those listening, am a, a planner with the city of Santa Rosa, I'm a senior planner. I've been there since 2006. I've never heard of us installing radar for um, a project like this, but um, can Mike, have you, are you aware of that at all? Um, no, not at all. Okay. I, I suspect that that radar was probably set up for something completely unrelated. Um, I will pass on to our traffic engineering or public works division that it's, it's shaded and may not be working properly um, because whatever they're using it for, I'm guessing that, um, they would want to know that. So thank you for bringing that to our, our attention. Um, I wanted to I wanted to ask also about the public hearing sign. Did that come down? I know it came down because of a public noticing you know, we had the wrong access information, but it was was it put back up? Do we know with the proper information in the 10 day period? Uh, as far as I know, it was put back up. We have a picture of the sign being put up uh, within the 10 days. Uh, what they did initially when they put the sign back up, they um, whited out the ID number to then put up the correct ID number this time. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, they replaced that sign with a, a new sign altogether with all the same information. Okay. Um, can, um, uh, can I ask? the applicant team, somebody from the applicant team to verify that the sign did go go up. I know we have an affidavit, um, if, or not that the sign did go up, but that there was, um, that if there was a problem that we're aware of or anything. Uh, Susie, this is Paul Gilger speaking. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, of course, the original sign had the wrong number. Right. So the very second that we got the information what the new number was, uh, we needed to get that new number on the sign as quick as possible, mm -hmm. as it does take a day or so for fast signs to make up the new sign. Right. So what so what the client did, Roy Cabrera, he went out and we quickly hand changed the original sign to the correct numbers. So they mm -hmm. gave us a little bit more time to get the actual print side made up, which actually went up the next day. And I do have I did take photographs of all that. We have that in the files. Can you tell me the date? Can you tell me the date, Paul? Oh, Mike, have you got it there? Um, let me look it up here. Yeah, give me one sec to look. Sure, through. sure. And Roy, you're on the Roy, you're on the line too. Roy might know off the top of his head. Uh, Roy, if you'll unmute yourself and let Susie know when what date you marked out the uh, the wrong numbers and what the, the following day was the the sign. 
You there, be Roy, are you there? I don't hear him. Oh, here he is. Hey, can you, oh. hey, can you hear me? Yeah, now yeah, we can, we hear, can you, hear you, Roy. Can, can you help Susie with this question on the dates that you marked when we corrected the, uh, the old sign and then put up the new sign? Absolutely. Uh, it was October 11th. And when I went up and wrote it handwritten, the next day when Fast Signs gave me the call, I picked up the sign and put it up immediately, which would be the 12th. Thank you. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna just go down kind of a list here in terms of the, the hours of operation. Um, when we did the, the updated, um, uh, downtown station area plan and created the CMU district. There was a, a really powerful outreach process that went along with that. <clears throat> and this, this uh, land use um, uh, designation, um, the uses that were allowed, one of them is, is extended hours of operation. And that is a use that is permitted by right, which means that a business along the Santa Rosa corridor can operate that's open to the public basically 24 hours a day. <clears throat> um, and I wanna say at this point that I'm gonna give a, a plug to our outreach efforts right now for the general plan update. We are in the process of doing a general plan update. This is when we really want to hear from you. We want you to get involved in that process. You can be involved in it in an effort just to focus on your area or the city as a whole. And I'm going to give an email address for Amy Lyle, who is our a supervising planner, who is spearheading that effort. And I will give it again at the end of this um, discussion. But her her Name again is Amy Lyle. Her email address is a l y l e at s r c i t y dot org. So that's a lyle at s r city dot org. Um, so I, I wanted to, and I wanted to mention that this, this is the time really to get involved, and the general plan update will also address implementing regulations. Um, wasted quality of space. Um, I, I'm not gonna say that I disagree with that. You know, we have very high hopes for this corridor um, of Santa Rosa Avenue, but this is a, a rel this is a, a temporary use. Um, it's not a temporary use permit, but it is a temporary use and that it's a mobile vending truck. And if at some point the property owner would like to propose something grander, they can. And that use in and of itself will go through its own review process independent of this one. Uh, I have a question for um, the applicant team and it goes back to the, the use of the bathrooms. Can you please verify that the bathrooms will be for employee use only? Will they be locked? And if they're for the public use, how that will how that will work? Hi, this is Roy. May I speak? Mm, yes, please. Yes, to address that 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 answer that question you're asking is yes, we will. The way we want to go about it is we would have it locked and for employee use only, as requested for um, by the Health Department of Sonoma County. Um, therefore, uh, preventing anyone from other than who was allowed to use it for anything other than what it's intended for. Okay, thank you very much. Concentration, I, I'm going to say, I, I hear everybody and I, I am grateful for everybody coming out and supporting Las Palmas. I love that restaurant and have eaten there many times. I will continue to eat there. Um, but the zoning code um, doesn't, doesn't allow us really to monitor concentration. What that means is a dozen Mexican food restaurants could come in in that same area. And so long as that we can make the findings for their use permits, we can approve them. We have to approve them. Um, that said, 
um, I think that the yeah, I I am I'm just um, awestruck by how many neighbors came out in support of that restaurant. I again agree. I it's a fabulous restaurant. Um, with that though, we we can't. I can, It's not a basis to deny a use permit because of over concentration or you know another. Mexican food restaurant nearby. My hope is that the menus will be significantly different so that they can both benefit and add diversity to the area. Uh, but again, that's not something that we will monitor. I also want to point out that we're approving a use for a mobile uh, food truck that does not have to be Mexican food. So if at some point the the business operator wanted to bring in, you know, a, a hamburger truck or a Japanese food truck or Italian food truck, that would be an option. We, they would be required to, to comply with the same rules, of course, but we are, we are not requiring a Mexican food truck. Um, we have circulation issues. The project plans, um, I'm gonna ask, uh, project planner, have the project plans been reviewed by city staff, Mike? Um, if so, uh, the, the site circulation specifically? <clears throat> yes, uh, they've been notified of the project. They reviewed the project for site circulation and they're okay with it. Did that include traffic engineering? Do you know um, engineering development? I don't know if it was sent to traffic engineering specifically, it was sent to engineering. Engineering Development Services. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so for circulation concerns and what have you on Oak Street, Mill Street and all the other surrounding streets, I, I would like to um, say that um, you, you, can, uh, we, you can contact our Public Works Department. We, um, there are, um, there may be some uh, traffic calming, um, measures that could be implemented. Um, oftentimes we get resistance from the from neighbors on that. So um, I think that that's a separate issue. I don't know that people from this, you know, I don't know that this the, the approval of this use would have an impact on that. So um, then we get to the graffiti issue. We do have a graffiti ordinance and I, would like to add a condition if it's not already on there that the project um, that the project be required to comply with the graffiti ordinance, which is the removal of on-site graffiti. If there is graffiti done, um, and I I think that I'm going to try and get you that title. Um, I believe it's Chapter Ten Seventeen of the city code, if we can add that as a condition of approval, that the project will comply with the graffiti ordinance. And it's the graffiti abatement program is the title. <clears throat> um, as far as vandalism and sideshows, I don't think that there's any reason to believe that the um, addition of this or the approval of this use is going to result in any additional vandalism or or sideshows, but in anticipation of, of sideshows or any other criminal activities, the project was conditioned to um, require the, the operator to contact the police department if something like that should happen. Again, the police department is down the road. Um, I understand that there may have been a delay in the last time um, or recently when a call was made, but if there is um, life-threatening activities, I know our police department will be on scene very quickly. Um, let's see, food truck being permitted. The, the, the statement that said that food trucks were only allowed on state on Sebastopol Avenue at one point in time is a, was a true statement. We have adopted um, resilient city measures in zoning code chapter 2016 that does permit food trucks in other locations. And this is one of those locations and it's through the, the process of a minor conditional use permit. Um, 
which is the process that we're going through today. As far as the public hearing sign, and the, I know the project was re-noticed with the proper, the proper um, uh, information so that people could access this meeting. There is also a section of the zoning code that allows for minor defects in noticing. I think that it has been very clear that this project, it's been noticed a few times, um, the, the project was, was scheduled, would be scheduled, would be heard by the zoning administrator at a public hearing. Um, knowing the notices that went out, a publication in the Press Democrat, knowing that the sign um, was two days um, late for the permanent sign and the information was only one day late, I am going to, um, I'm going to consider that a defect that I'm, I'm okay with. Um, and then uh, noise. I know noise came up as a concern and I'd like to, to address that the project has been conditioned to remain in compliance with the city's nor noise ordinance. And how it's been conditioned is that um, at, the, at the property line, where it's a shared property line with residential uses, that the, the decibel level cannot exceed a certain, a certain amount. And that is based on, um, let's see, it's citywide and any, any single family residential property line, the noise level cannot exceed 55 decibels from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., 50 decibels from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., and 45 decibels from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. So this project will remain, or has been conditioned to remain within those, those boundaries. Um, these uses are, are allowed in this location. And I will say that if the project doesn't comply with them, yes, we can imply some other measures. We can also revoke the use permit. So um, it really is in the applicant or the business operator's best interest to comply with those conditions of approval. So I also wanna say thank you. Thank you, thank you to all of those of you that um, provided written comments um, it's no surprise that during meetings, hearings, we often hear from the people that are opposed to the project and not those that are in favor of the project. And we received several written comments that were posted um, that were in favor of the project. And that's what this process is all about, is finding a, a common ground. Um, <clears throat> and I think as conditioned, I think we've done that. We've listened to the neighbors. Um, Let's see, I think concerns traffic. I think I've addressed the comments that were raised. Um, I would like to add another condition of approval, which I started to say earlier. I think that it's important that a project like this do have or does have on-site seating, maybe not to the degree that it was initially proposed at, 72 seats. But what I'd like to add a condition to this as well is that the, the applicant shall consider, it's not a requirement, but shall consider adding tables for up to 24 people to dine on site. I think 72 is excessive, I agree but I think it's reasonable to expect that people will want to sit and eat their food while it's hot. And I think that many neighbors have expressed their desire for that as well. <clears throat> I want to give another plug before I give, take action for our general plan update and contacting Amy Lyle at A-L-Y-L-E at srcity.org. We want your input. <clears throat> so with that, I am going to, let's see, clarifying hours. I'm just looking at my notes to make sure. Storage continues. With that, I am going to um, approve the conditional use permit as conditioned with the additional conditions added. 
And I'm going to reiterate that there is a 10 day uh, appeal process because the 10th day will fall on um, October 30th, which is a Sunday. The appeal period will end on that close of business on Monday, um, October 31st. Um, if you're interested in submitting an appeal, please contact Mike Wixon, the project planner, or you can also email planning at srcity.org and one of the planners will send you the application and the required fee. And I think that that concludes this first item. If we can move on to the second agenda item, which is being continued to November 3rd for a public hearing. And this is the project for Pura Vida Recovery Services located at 5761 Mountain Hawk. Again, that has been continued for a public hearing until November 3rd, 2022. So item moving on to item 5.3. This is a public meeting for the Thompson, Thompson edition. Uh, this project is uh, exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. It's a landmark alteration for the property located at 418 Benton Street. City file number LMA 22-002. And before I hand it over to the project planner, I would like to disclose that I did a site visit very early on in this um, application process, ap application review process, as I was mentoring a then um, planner in training. And so I have done a site visit. I am familiar with the project and the plans. And that will not sway my decision in any way. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Sheila Wolski to go ahead and give us a presentation. Okay. Um, Zoning Administrator Murray, can you let me know if you can see my uh, PowerPoint presentation? I can see it just fine, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, good morning, no wait, good afternoon, Zoning Administrator Murray. The item before you is a minor landmark alteration permit for an addition to a 1920s home in the Ridgeway Preservation District at 418 Benton Street. The applicants are seeking a minor landmark alteration permit for the remodel of 690 square feet of existing space and the addition of 72 square feet. The project is considered minor because all the remodel work and the addition to the home is taking place at the side and rear of the property, which is outside of the public's view from the right of way. This slide is a site plan showing the extent of the work, which is highlighted in the lighter gray at the bottom of the slide. The area of the addition is highlighted in darker gray. For reference, Benton Street is at the top of the slide. And the project will replace siding, gables, gutter, windows, and roofing materials to match the existing materials of the home. This slide shows the elevation of the south side of the property where the work will take place. The owner's architect, Patrick Slater, has provided a letter demonstrating how the remodel and addition are consistent with the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitating historic homes. This slide provides neighborhood context for the property, which is seen here outlined in blue. This slide shows the overlay of the city's general plan land use designation and zoning district, which is residential. And this slide outlines the criteria for the zoning administrator to make a decision on the minor landmark alteration permit which speaks not only to the development standards applicable to the project, such as setbacks and height requirements, but also that the project is consistent with the architectural style of the home. The project has been found to be categorically exempt from CEQA. I've cited CEQA guidelines section 15301 and 15303, which address minor modifications to existing structures and new construction of small structures. 
There are no unresolved issues following staff review. After a notice was sent to residents within 600 feet of the property, I've not received any comments or concerns regarding this project. One change to the draft resolution that was posted online is an adjustment to the construction hours, which are noted on this slide. The city allows construction to begin earlier and end later. However, given the home's location in a residential neighborhood, conditioning the project with these hours will be more sensitive to the neighbors. It is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the zoning administrator approve a minor landmark alteration permit to allow exterior modifications at 418 Benton Street. That concludes my report. Uh, here's my contact information for anyone calling in. My name is Sheila Walski. My email is swolski at srcity.org. And my phone number is 707-543-4705. If there are any questions, I believe one of the homeowners, Kyle Thompson, is in attendance on this Zoom, as well as their architect, Patrick Slater. Thank you. Thank you for a great presentation. And I wanna say before I, uh, well, I, I'll say my comments after I open up the public comment period. So opening the public comment period, if you have anything that you'd like to add or questions you'd like to ask, please raise your hand. I don't see any phone callers, but if there is a phone caller out there, star nine will get your hand raised. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing any hands raised and we do not have any callers. Okay, and officially opening and closing the public comment period. So I wanna say first, thank you to the applicant for their patience. I know this has been a long haul. They, they went through our short staffing period and I'm thrilled that the project is about to be approved. Thank you very much. I am approving this as conditioned. I think it's a fabulous project. Um, all the changes are completely, almost completely out of view from um, the public right away, if not completely. And good luck with your project. Okay, so that's my cue to move on here. Uh, Item number 5.4, this is an AT&T cell tower modification. Is It has been found exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. This is a minor design review permit for the property located at 1594 Hampton Way, city file number DR22039. And I'm going to ask Sheila Wolski to go ahead and provide us the next presentation. Thank you, Zoning Administrator Murray. Are you able to see my PowerPoint presentation? I can, and it's in PowerPoint presentation mode. All right, let's go. Okay, the project before you is a co-location uh, proposed by AT&T of antennas and equipment on an existing telecommunications facility at 1594 Hampton Way. This type of application requires minor design review. The applicant is requesting to remove existing antennas and co-locate six new panel antennas and six remote radio units on an existing monopole. At ground level, they propose to remove and install equipment to include the addition of three new cabinets and eight rectifiers. This slide shows the zoning and general plan land use designation of the property and the parcel is outlined here in blue. As noted in the previous slide, this is a residentially zoned parcel where telecommunications facilities are not allowed. However, this telecommunications facility was permitted in the county's jurisdiction before this property was annexed into the city of Santa Rosa. The city's zoning code addresses modifications to existing legal non-conforming telecommunications facilities in the section that's depicted here on the slide. 
The section notes that minor design review of co-location projects are subject to the minor design review process only, which is what we're doing today. This slide shows the location of the telecommunications facility, which is a leased space at the rear of the property and next to the Joe Redota Trail. This slide shows the existing monopole on the left, and the slide on the right is a photo simulation of what the project would look like once the new antennas are installed. And this is a perspective from the Joe Redota Trail. Again, this is another perspective from Hampton Way. Looking north, this slide shows the existing monopole on the left, and the slide on the right is, again, a photo simulation of what the project would look like if constructed. This is a site plan showing the telecommunications area on the parcel, outlined in yellow. This is an elevation sheet, somewhat similar to the um, photo simulations I showed earlier, but this has plan information and more specifics. On the left is the existing monopole. On the right is the proposed project with the additional antennas. And again, this is another elevation taken from the east with the existing conditions on the left and proposed conditions on the right. The applicant has provided a radio frequency electromagnetic energy compliance report reviewed and approved by a licensed electrical engineer that demonstrates the proposed project complies with all FCC regulations for transmissions. Following notice to residents within 600 feet of the site, no public comment has been received. The proposed project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and qualifies for a class one exemption under CEQA guidelines section 15301E, which is existing facilities, in that the addition to the existing structures will not result in an increase of 2,500 square feet. Following the online posting of the drafts, draft resolution, reduced construction hours have been added to the conditions of approval for the project to be sensitive to nearby residential neighbors. These construction hours have been shared to, shared with and agreed to by the applicant. The Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the zoning administrator by resolution approve a minor design review permit for the property located at 1594 Hampton Way. This concludes my report. This slide provides my contact information for questions about this project. For those calling in, my name is Sheila Walski. My phone number is 707-543-4705. And my email is swolski at srcity.org. I uh, believe the applicant is still in attendance and can answer any questions about this project. I think on the line I saw earlier, we have Itul Genser and Gloria Shin, if there are any questions. Thank you. Another great presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to ask if there are any members of the public I'm gonna, that have any comments, opening the public comment period. If you wish to make a public comment, please raise your hand by selecting the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. If you're calling in, you can press star nine. Zoning Administrator Murray, I have, I see no hands raised at this time. Thank you very much. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and close the public comment period. I have reviewed the resolution. I am, Thrilled that the hours of operation or uh, construction are being changed. And um, for those of you who know me, that's one of my pet peeves, so I appreciate it. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and approve the project as conditioned. And thank you again, Sheila. You did a great job. Okay, so next we have... <clears throat> item 5.5, which is another public meeting. This is a dish wireless, um, I'm going to say upgrade. 
Uh, it's another project that has been determined to be exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. Um, it involves uh, a conditional use permit and design review, both minor applications for the property located at 100 Fountain Grove Parkway. And the city file number is PRJ22-017 for the conditional use permit. The application number is CUP22-048. And for the design review application, the file number is DR22-035. And I'm gonna ask uh, Nor Bisla to go ahead and give us a presentation. Good morning. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Are you able to see my presentation? Yes, okay. Um, so this application is for a dish wireless antenna site um, and the applicant is requesting minor design review and a minor conditional use permit. Um, this will be a new dish wireless antenna site at the Extended Stay America at a 100 Fountain Grove Parkway. Um, there will be six antennas on the roof in three sectors, which will be screened from public view using cupolas painted to match the existing building. Um, there will also be a ground level equipment cabinet, which will be screened by chain link fences, by a chain link fence with slots. Um, here is a close up aerial view of the site, as well as a neighborhood context map. The general plan land use designation for the site is retail and business services, and it is in a plan development zoning district. Um, here is the site plan. As you can see, there's the three um, antennas, the three sections that will be located on the roof, and then the section um, with the ground level cabinet um, in the back. Um, here on the left, you can see the ground level cabinet being screened off from public view um, with the green slats that will match the surrounding area. And on the right, you can see um, that the antennas will be completely screened from public view by the cupolas. Planning staff is able to make all the required findings for a minor conditional use permit. Um, the project will be taking place on an existing commercial site and will not interfere with the commercial use of the property. And as a condition of approval, proper measures will be implemented to limit the effects of radiation at the rooftop level. Planning staff is also able to make all the required findings for minor design review. The proposed antennas would be screened from public view using materials that are aesthetically pleasing and architecturally compatible with the existing structure. This project is categorically exempt from CEQA with a class one exemption in that it involves minor modifications to an existing structure. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review and no public comment has been received for the proposed project. It is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor conditional use permit and minor design review to allow the DISH wireless antenna site at 100 Fountain Grove Parkway. And for any questions or comments, um, here's my contact information. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've reviewed the resolution. I've reviewed the plant project plans. And I, I have to say, you know, I, I, I am so happy that they are disguising um, the antennas and the cupola and not putting in another tree or pole. <laughs> That are, are not nearly as attractive. So I have to give kudos for the, the, the design of this project. That's great. Um, I did want to make, just for clarifying um, purposes, I wanted to make a change in the title bar of the uh, um, resolution. 
um, where it reads um, about halfway through and minor design review for the antenna site. I would like to clarify that a little bit more and change it to read minor design review for the installation of the antenna and associated equipment. If we could make that change in the, um, the resolution, that would be great. Um, I also, hours of oper or, uh, construction are one of my pet peeves and my other pet peeve is chain link fences. So I'm not gonna ask for a redesign, but I would like to add a condition of approval to this. Oh, oh gosh, I forgot about the public comment period. Wait for my condition of approval, stay tuned. I would like to open up the public comment period. If there is anybody out there that would like to make a comment, please use the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen or hit star nine if you're calling in and let us know if you'd like to make a comment. Zoning Administrator Murray, I see no hands raised at this time. You. Ah, and then I'm going to close the, the public comment period, and I hate it when I do that. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, I'd like to go ahead and add in um, a condition of approval that, um, that the applicant consider a more attractive enclosure for the equipment. Um, that can be an alternative material, preferably, you know, preferably wood or corrugated metal, but the condition just consider a more attractive design for the enclosure, which can be reviewed over the counter and approved by planning staff. And I, I, if this were not almost completely out of view from the public right away, I would have made that a stronger condition of approval. So the applicant is aware if you have any other projects in the city, um, like to keep, keep chain link out of it. So um, with that, I'm gonna approve this resolution and move on to the next item in our, our very long agenda today. So let's see, the next item, 5.6 is a, a public meeting for the property located at 349 College Avenue to, uh, this is a CEQA exempt project, and it's a proposal to rehabilitate, rehab, I guess, uh, reconstruction. It, it involves a landmark alteration. And the actual address, I should say, is 349 and a half College Avenue. City file number is LMA 22-014. And the project planner, Monet Shikali, will give us a, a presentation. Thank you, Ms. Murray, and good afternoon. It's no more morning, so I'm going to share my screen right now and give a presentation. I just also, ahead of time, I want to let you know the applicant is also available. Any future questions can be directed to him also. Okay, let's start here. So as you mentioned, this is a minor landmark alteration permit for a project at 349 College Avenue. So the project is proposing to repair the exterior of a fire damaged building by replacing the siding, the uh, uh, roofing materials, windows that will match those of the existing on the structure and to remove the second floor exterior hallway on the rear of the building that was added later and is not part of the original historic building. So here is where the project is located. The zone is CG, general commercial, and consistent with the general plan, retail and businesses, land use. The, uh, project, the site has been used for commercial for a long time ago, and since the fire happened in 2018, this property has been vacant and been fenced. So about the site, uh, the proposed project is for the site uh, here is within the uh, red uh, rectangular. This site was damaged by a fire in 2018 and the building in the back, you can see it here, it's completely demolished and damaged and is removed from the site. So the only building on the site right now is the one in the red rectangular. 
Here is a site plan that shows location of the existing building and uh, the parking that has been improved behind the building. And let me go in the existing pictures of the site. The front of the building does not have uh, lots of damages. Windows have been covered. And as you can see on the north elevation, which is back of the building, that's where most of the fire damage had happened. And let me go to the next page to show the part that is going to be removed. Here is the hallway on the back of the building that the applicant is proposing to remove it. A historic report was prepared for the project and it explains that how that hallway is not the original part of the building and it was added later. So by removing it, basically we are preserving it. The applicant is preserving it at bringing back the historic structure. Also, uh, let me go back to the previous slide. As you can see, the exterior siding, the way it looks like, the historic report also mentions that this is not the original exterior, but it was covered years ago, and the applicant is still placing back the damaged structures, the shingle siding. So it will keep it as it looks like. Also, here on the south elevation, there's a concrete wall. If you can see it, I'm trying to show with my arrow. That was not part of the original building, and the applicant is removing it and is replacing with the same siding, shingle siding, to match with the rest of the building. And here is the existing and the proposed elevation. On the top part, you have the existing elevation, and on the lower part, you have the proposed elevation. That shows the concrete wall will be removed and replaced with the shingle and also the hallway will be removed and bring the building back to its original style. And here is also the other sites, west and north elevation, and the applicant is proposing to repair it. And here is the floor elevation, which I tried to include to show the removal of the hallway on the second floor. And since the project was notified, I have not received any comments or questions about the proposed project. The project also has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and qualifies for a class one exemption. And with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the zoning administrator by resolution approve a minor landmark alteration permit for the property located at 349 College Avenue. And that was my presentation for today. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to um, open up the public comment period and ask that if you'd like to make a public comment, please use the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen or press star nine if you're calling in to raise your hand. Zoning Administrator Murray, I see no hands raised at this time. Well, then I am going to just throw in my two cents after I close this public comment period. Throw in my two cents that I am thrilled to see the restoration going on, including the removal of that, that hallway that doesn't appear to lead anywhere <laughs> right now. But um, anyways, I'm, I think the project looks great. Um, and... Uh, I, I have no changes. I don't think there were any changes to the resolution. I kind of lost track here. So confirming that, Monet? Correct, no there was no changes made to this resolution. You're right. Perfect. Thank you very much. I'm going to approve the project as is. Um, and uh, again, I appreciate, I'm the, the staff liaison to the Cultural Heritage Board. I love to see restoration in our preservation districts and some of our older properties. So congratulations to the applicant. You have a, an approved project. And again, this project and every other action taken today at this meeting is, um, is subject to a 10 day appeal period. So if anybody would like to um, appeal, contact your project planner and um, or the planning planning at srcity.org and someone will get you the information for the application and the required fee. So uh, Ms. Shikali, have safe travels. Moving on, <laughs> moving on to item 5.7. <clears throat> As I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, we have uh, received a public hearing request for this item. It will be um, 
continued to a date uncertain, meaning that you will receive um, another notice. Um, there will also be a, a change in the address <clears throat> because the project really does span two parcels. Um, and then moving on to item 5.8, this item again will be continued to a date uncertain. We have not received a public hearing request. There are some minor design changes happening and we're waiting until um, the plans are complete. So with that, um, I'm going to say again, uh, any, any appeals must be received by planning and economic development by close of business on Monday, October 31st, Halloween. Um, and with that, I'm going to adjourn the uh, zoning administrator meeting at 1249 on October 20th. Thank you, everybody, and have a really wonderful afternoon.